Hurry, hurry, hurry. There are only 22 more days until Christmas. We have only 22 more days to get our trees up, the lights and the decorations out, the presents and the shopping to get done, and even less time to write, address, and mail out the family Christmas cards. Everywhere we look this time of year, there are signs urgently reminding us of the imminent arrival of Christmas Day. It is coming and there is nothing that is going to stop it, so we better get prepared. While the rest of the world seems to be focusing on things that are not fruitful, the idea of taking some time to intentionally prepare for Christmas is actually something we desperately need. And here is where the church is called to embrace the gift of Advent, those four precious weeks before Christmas. With the excitement and hustle of the Christmas season all around us, we often overlook that Advent is the time to prepare for Jesus, for Jesus coming again in our hearts, our homes, and into our lives. So it's no surprise that the text on the second Sunday of Advent center around this idea of preparing the way for the Lord. In the fifteenth year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it was written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of the one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. For every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Every year during the Advent season, John the Baptizer makes an appearance in our lectionary text. And John makes many of us in mainline denominations a little uneasy. A wild man dressed in funny clothes, yelling and screaming about turning or burning. We have enough darkness around us. Our news is full of horrible events of violence, destruction, and sadness. We don't really want to spend more time having to dissect what role we play in these events. Yet John will not allow us to simply rush to the manger. John takes us into the desert so we have to spend some time thinking, reflecting, and preparing our hearts for Advent. Time in the wilderness can be scary. But in a society that is always on the go, in a church that is overwhelmingly busy and hectic, the time away is a precious gift. John's message is not a message of fear, but one of hope. The word used here in Greek, metanoia, means a literal change of direction, a turning away from. Here, repentance is more than just saying sorry for the things we have done. True repentance is a change of direction, a change of our whole being. During this time of Advent, I think about the things in my life I need to change. Then I wonder, what would this look like for our church, or even as all people of faith? What are the things that we need to repent from? That is, to think about and change rather than simply paying lip service by saying we're sorry. It's tough and painful work to touch these tender spots, but that is what the time of Advent is all about. The amazing hope in this text is that the story doesn't finish with John challenging us in the wilderness. The story that the waiting and angst of Advent sets up is the gift that comes in the manger. When you spend time in darkness preparing and reflecting on the shadow side of things, we are even more amazed and yearning for the light. The call to repentance is a gift that makes Christmas even more amazing. And even if we fail miserably at preparing, even if we are not able to truly turn away from things the way we should, the gift of salvation is not taken away from us. Luke echoes the word of the prophet Isaiah again lifting up the images of valleys being raised and mountains being leveled so that the path of the Lord is straight. This powerful image reminds us that nothing can stop the arrival of the promised salvation. Even the rugged powers and challenges of nature will be tamed so that the promise will be fulfilled. That's amazing news for us and we can't stop and we can't screw up the promises of grace. So suddenly spending some time preparing in this context is a whole lot less scary. All flesh shall see the glory of God. That is the promise the world needs to hear. Preparing the way of the Lord means that as a church we got a lot of work to do. There's a lot of pain, injustice, and darkness, and we have to make our way through. But Luke reminds us that we do not take this path of loan. We don't take this path to see defeat, but rather grace and one day the ultimate triumph of God's love. This text gives us the courage and a reminder to take on the world and be bold in what we do. 
So as we continue down the road of Advent, let's get out our bulldozers and start preparing the way for the Lord, for the salvation of God is at hand.